Hey guys, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani here. Today's video is gonna be on brain fog and bacterial overgrowth. We're gonna be looking at the connection between your gut and your brain and how that affects mood, etc. All right, before we dive in, make sure you smash that like button. I really appreciate it. While you're there, hit the subscribe and make sure you hit the bell so you get notifications of great content coming your way. Also, put some comments below. I wanna know about your experience with brain fog. Do you have it? and what you've done to help improve it. That helps. All right, so first off, what is brain fog? So if here's your brain, this is your brain. We have microglial cells in the brain, MG. And these cells get activated or turned on with inflammation. So microglial cells are like white blood cells in the brain. They help scavenge and help clean things up. When there's an environment where there's inflammation, right? So inflammation is like this little star. These microglial cells increase. They, they start, it's kind of like me throwing a football on a field full of mouse traps. Once one hits, boom, you kind of have this exponential effect with everything around it. So when these microglial cells are activated, there's gonna be inflammation. There's gonna be inflammation as a result because they're cleaning things up. So they're responding to inflammation, but then we get more inflammation because of it. And part of uh, the symptoms of inflammation in the brain is you're gonna have brain fogginess because you have these cells trying to clean things up. Think of it as like you bump your elbow, what happens? You have a histamine vasodilation response and things swell up, right? That swelling is something visible. Well, in your brain, that swelling is gonna manifest cognitive-wise, cognitively. So we gotta work on getting the inflammation down. Now, there's this bi-directional movement of inflammation. So things in your environment can cause problems with the gut. Okay, we know that. Gluten, I eat it, gut inflammation. Bacterial overgrowth, food poisoning, salmonella, campylobacter hits my gut, can create gut permeability issues, can increase and activate my immune response. But also we have what's called the blood-brain barrier. These are natural barriers in our body. We also have the gut blood barrier. This is gonna be the tight junction, the epithelial cells in our gut. And this is gonna be what's called astrocytes. Astrocytes make up our blood brain barrier in our brain. And then in our gut, we have what are called epithelial cells. These are the little tight junctions that open up and expose our gut into the bloodstream. The gut's actually considered outside of our body, even though we swallow something. Once it goes into our bloodstream, now it's inside of the body. So blood brain, gut, blood barrier. Now, when we get foods going into the, into the blood, it's just a matter of time before what goes into the blood here makes its way up here. So anything in the gut, it could be food, it could be inflammatory compounds like aspartame or MSG. It could be pesticides. Any of these things are gonna eventually make their way from the blood, from our gut, up into the brain. When we activate our microglial cells, cognitively as a result, we're gonna see brain fog as a result. Just like you bump your elbow, it swells. Swelling in the brain is gonna manifest as brain fog. Now, test for brain inflammation. Because of this gut, brain, slash, brain blood barrier, anything that creates gut inflammation can affect our brain. This is vitally important. So if we have infections, food allergens, bacterial overgrowth, H. pylori, any of these things is gonna stress out our gut, it's gonna eventually affect our brain. So good GI tests are gonna be essential to assessing what's happening in the gut that could be affecting the brain. It could be a parasite, it could be H. pylori. Anytime you start having poor digestion, low stomach acid, low enzymes, our risk for food allergies goes up because the more intolerant we are, the more we have a hard time breaking something down, the greater chance our immune system is gonna to react to it. So if we have poor enzyme and poor acid levels, that means we're not gonna break down our proteins or our fats or our carbohydrates adequately, and there's a greater chance that we're gonna develop an immune response to that food. So food allergies really create problems, and you're gonna see that magnified with poor digestion, with poor enzymes and poor HCL levels. Organic acid tests are great because there's some markers in there, otherwise known as a quinolinic acid, quinolinate, 
and picolinate, these compounds go it increase when there's more brain inflammation. So they give us a really good window of what's happening under the hood. So on an organic acid test, quinolinate and or picolinate are really good markers. Now for the gut, we may look at other markers like CRP, which is going to be on your blood test. Uh, a typical blood test, you'd add CRP to it. We may see ANA, which is an autoimmune marker, but typically there's inflammation for that ANA to be positive. We may see ESR, erythrocyte sedimentation rate. We may also run things like homocysteine may be a good marker of inflammation in the blood. And um, calprotectin's a good one. We're going to see that more in the stool, though. Calprotectin's a marker of inflammation that's produced by white blood cells in the gut. And when there's inflammation, various interleukins and cytokines, which are these various chemical messengers that due to food or a stressor, our white blood cells are going to produce calprotectin, kind of like our, our liver produces C-reactive protein. It's a protein that's produced, and this is more specific for gut inflammation, and this is kind of more kind of a systemic inflammation. There's highly sensitive CRP, which is kind of more systemic inflammation. But calprotectin is a really good one because we know when there's more gut inflammation, right? That means there's going to be more gut, brain, gut, blood barrier, and then blood brain barrier. So the more there's gut issues, the greater chance there's going to be brain issues, okay? So anytime inflammation in the gut equals inflammation in the brain, that's going to be my message here that I'm repeating over and over again. So what can we do to, have, to help and support brain fog? So number one, look at the foods. If there's a food that you're eating, a new food, whether it's dairy-based, casein, gluten, or other grains, or nuts, or seeds, these are going to be the first easily offending foods. That's number one. Number two, blood sugar swings can actually be another thing. When, you're, when your blood sugar is like this, and this is the optimal blood sugar zone right here, Eating healthy proteins and fats typically allows you to stay in that zone, eating every four or five hours. Your blood sugar goes like that. When you eat erratically, not enough protein or fat, or too much carbohydrates or too much refined sugar, you're going to go up high and you're going to drop down low. Up high, drop down low. This tug of war, on the high side you have insulin, on the low side you have cortisol, And adrenaline. So cortisol, adrenaline picks you back up. Insulin brings you back down. Most people live their day in a tug of war, high, low, high, low. We want to eat and be more fat burners. So a kind of a keto paleo template or dial your carbs in for what you need to be at. Some people don't need to be at a ketogenic level all the time. Dial that in. That's going to really help with brain fog. Antioxidants like vitamin C, resveratrol, citricoline, vitamin E, turmeric, curcumin, um, these are powerful antioxidants that can actually help curtail brain inflammation. They can help attenuate or relax those microglial cells so then you have less brain fog. Of course, head trauma is going to be a big one, but that's not going to be necessarily connected to bacterial overgrowth, right? Bacterial overgrowth can do a couple things. It can lower stomach acid and enzyme levels. When you have poor digestion, it increases the amount of food allergies. When you have more stress on the gut, it compromises the immune system. When the immune system is compromised, you have a greater chance for other infections to come in, other parasites, H. pylori, or CFO or fungal overgrowth. So you can just see this could be fungal overgrowth, this could be parasitic infections. Any type of gut stressor can affect the gut blood brain barrier, right? Permeability in the gut, permeability in the brain, activate the microglial cells, we got brain fog. So we talked about some of the antioxidants, talked about food allergy. Fix the gut. So we go through my six R program, remove the bad foods. First R. Second R, replace enzymes and acids so we can better digest our food. Third R, repair the hormonal system, adrenals, thyroid. Work on repairing and calming down the guts. If you calm down the guts, whether it's collagen or ginger tea or deglycerized licorice or bone broth or glutamine, these things are going to help calm the gut. That's also going to help calm the inflammation in the brain because anything that gets through the gut eventually will make its way to the brain. Fourth R, remove the infections. This is done fourth. Why? Because we have to set the foundation. It's like someone wanting to build the awesomest second floor of their house and ignoring the foundation. So we have to have a good foundation set in place. Also, getting rid of gut issues can be 
inflammatory, can be stressful. So we have to set that foundation so we have the ability to do it and we're ready to do it and we're good and our systems are on board. Fifth R will be repopulate, re-inoculate. We're adding in good bacteria that helps get down the inflammation more. Probiotics can help reduce inflammation in the gut, thus helping to improve brain fog. Again, so probiotics can be added to that list. They're not going to last forever. They're going to last a few weeks, maybe a month. That's why we want to have good fermented foods in our diet, but it's going to really help reduce inflammation and get that bacterial balance back in more in, in favor of the good stuff versus the bad. And then, of course, retesting. Make sure you have the infections under control and other family members or pets aren't passing them back and forth to you. If you want to dive in deeper and look and see if your brain fog is connected to a gut issue or maybe another hormonal issue, click down below, schedule with myself or my colleagues. If you, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up, a share, hit that bell for notifications, and put your comments down below. I really want to know what you guys think about. All right, if you want to dive in deeper, feel free to reach out. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you have a phenomenal day. Take care. Bye now.